Robinson in motion that time. He stays in the block. And Trubisky on the rollout. Got to heave it deep downfield for Mooney. Who makes the catch? Oh, what a 17. Pack break five. Trubisky fires. Did Mooney hang on to that? Sure. Mooney gets the corner to the 40 of the Lions and gets the first down, and he does not go out of bounds. He takes out the defender. All right, everybody, welcome back to Bears Nation and Podcast Breakdowns, episode two. Coming at you with your host, Kevin Lapka, alongside my boy, Kellen Gerenstein. Back at it, the crew, the duo. Uh, had a What's lot of success with, with episode one, Justin Fields' breakdown. Y'all love that one, but we're back here. We're going to get back to Justin Fields in a few weeks. Don't worry about it, but right now, we're breaking down Bears' second-year wide receiver, Darnell Mooney. You could say kind of a breakout rookie season for being a fifth-round draft pick. Big year two coming up. Kellen, uh, it's good to see you, my man. And uh, tell me some things to like about D. Mooney today, my man. First off, good to see you, and that was so fun, and I'm, I'm so glad our first episode did as well as it did on YouTube, but um, we're recording this kind of late, and just over 24 hours ago, unfortunately for me, Anthony Miller was traded. Anyone who knows me knows I'm an Anthony Miller guy. He just needed a quarterback, but what that means now is Darnell Mooney, which he was going to be anyway, is a clear-cut number two receiver behind Allen Robinson out there, and I think for a rookie quarterback, and Justin might not start right away, but the things that Darnell Mooney does are going to be very helpful for a rookie quarterback. And we heard Allen Robinson might be moving to the slot, which is good news. I think he'll get a lot of production out of there, create a lot of mismatches. Um, Mooney will probably be playing that, that Z receiver where he can stretch the field and kind of catch those underneath passes. He's super, super twitchy, right? I mean, we, we see it on film. He's breaking guys off on the routes. He's making guys miss after the catch. Uh, skinny frame, but that switch is going to come in handy when when you need a bailout guy, as we all saw on the Jalen Ramsey route, which we'll take a look at. He breaks guys down super, super easy in good hands, right? There's not a lot of concentration drops and his, his catch radius is fantastic. It absolutely is. You need three things right there, but let's get straight into the kip, clips. Let's kick it off. Uh, I think we're going to New Orleans or no to Chicago for Bears versus Chicago, Saints yep. in this first clip in Chicago last year. But let's take a look at this clip here against New Orleans. All right, so on this play, we're looking at what is called somewhat of a Yankee concept, but the Bears are going to run it with two receivers on this side. Here's Darnell Mooney over here. Anthony Miller motioned into the slot, and down at the bottom is Allen Robinson. And I'll let it play, and I'll kind of talk through it. And Mooney at the top, I'm going to break this down, obviously, but it's just beating the guy off the line, running that deep post, and then the under route uh, underneath him from Robinson and Miller's the second man over the top. So... I believe this is Janoris Jenkins over here. Um, probably should have looked that up beforehand. Um, but I believe that's him over there. And I think with Mooney at this point, I think it's week seven or eight. The jury's yeah. out on him. He, he's, he's a twitchy guy off the line. He makes guys miss and he's going to fight. He's, like I said, a little frame. But if you miss at the line against him, you're not catching up to him. So you're not going to put hands on him at the line, even though he is lined up in press coverage. He's not going to put hands on him. So Mooney. Does a little stutter step. I'm not going to be the guy that's going to break down receivers like I did quarterbacks last week, but I think there's a lot less science that goes into it at the same time. A lot of head movement, a lot of use of your eyes, and a lot of what I call in high school beating the drum is getting down um, when you're breaking down like right, that. Right. Um, and, and there's a there's a very smaller portion of science to being a receiver, in my opinion, obviously, in my biased opinion, than there is being a quarterback. But you're going to win to the inside on this. This safety's leverage is already. Uh, facing the opposite way of where Mooney already is. He's got to identify two guys. So this is easy for him to get over the top. He just he just has to win with um, with uh, speed. So the route combination is going to look like this. Miller's going to come over the top of this player. Robinson's going to get back underneath him. And Mooney's going to come back over the top here. And when I let it play, we're going to get exactly that. Clear this. And this is just Nick Foles making, on a rare occasion, a good throw, a good deep throw. And like, like last week we said, 
We're not here to bag on Nick Foles. We're not here to bag on Mitchell Trubisky. We're not here to, to do any of that. But this is a good throw. Um, and we didn't see it a lot last year. And I think Mooney's production kind of suffered at the hands of it. But just a, a solid route run, a solid great throw, great catch. Um, not a lot to break down with that. It's just Darnell Mooney being a really good football player, winning to the inside. He's got to get to the inside on the post. Yes. If Janoris Jenkins is going to give him the inside, then he's going to take it. If he's not going to get hands on him, he's going to take exactly what he gives him. So he gets inside, wins inside, gets over the top of the safety with ease. Matt Nagy, good play design, very good play design for, for this for this look. I mean, it is technically a split safety look, but this player, I believe that's Malcolm Jenkins, is moving down into the box. Very easy catch and throw for an NFL quarterback. Even though that is that's solid coverage, you got a guy like Darnell Moon who's gonna win like that. You're gonna win that, you're gonna win that matchup. And, and we'll get to it at a later date. Uh, Justin Fields made a living off of the Yankee concept in college. Uh, we'll get to that in the next episode. But um pitch and catch, man. Darnell Mooney kind of makes it easy uh on his quarterbacks in that case. And I think you see this route and this this run a lot of times, you know, so him just saying, okay, we're going to beat you to the inside. And when it's one-on-one, -on -one, you know, not just him, but Matt Nagy knows that. I mean, he knows that you, this is one of the fastest guys in the NFL, honestly, one of the, fa if not the fastest guy on the Chicago Bears, if you get boom right there at the 30 where they're eating. Even if they're even with if he's even with Janoris Jenkins, you know, five yards off the line of scrimmage at the 30, it, it, it's good night. It's good night. Unless you're facing an extremely talented cornerback like, you know, a Jalen Ramsey or another faster guy who's going to, you know, be fast enough to catch up to this. If you're right there and like Helen mentioned, the safety's not, you know, shadowing that over the top, you know, it's you know, it might be a touchdown. You know, this this is a good ball. This is a good ball. Could it have been better, Kellen? I mean, could, could this play right here have results? I mean, he doesn't have the most separation. Does he have enough? Yes, he, he may not yeah. have the most. But you see right when he hits, you know, kind of the, the, the end of the route, he sort of, you know, Jenkins, you know, catches up a little bit because I think Mooney, you know, he tracks the ball, I think sort of slows down a little bit because that ball was a little bit to the inside, had to go track it. We know Justin Fields' deep ball ability. With a, a perfectly thrown ball a little bit further out, is this a touchdown? I think so. Um, that ball, you got to be asking him a quarterback to do even more. But yes, a, a perfectly accurate ball on that upfield shoulder where Mooney isn't breaking stride. I actually think his stride is broken a little bit at the top uh, of, of this break, uh, which which may hurt a little bit. But in, in any case, a perfect ball where he's catching this in full stride. See, I was catching it on his numbers, mm -hmm. which usually we, we, we put up on the numbers as a good throw. But in this case, you want the little bit outstretched, a little bit more upfield. Yeah, that's probably a touchdown. If nonetheless, we're probably getting in the red zone instead of getting stopped at the 25, which, like we said last time, we're not going to complain with a result like that. But no. with a bit more accurate throw, sure, we might see a touchdown. At the very least, we're getting in the red zone. And I think one thing you see here, too, is just his ability to track the football. You're going to notice this in a lot of different plays. Obviously, when you're a deep ball receiver and you're getting 40 plus yard routes and you have a guy who's throwing the football extremely high in the air, one skill that nobody talks about when it comes to receivers is tracking the ball. Ball. It's like I play baseball in center field. You have to track the ball real well. Um, you know, this is a great job here getting to the inside, tracking the ball, going to where the ball is thrown on that post route. Like I said, it's a good throw from Nick Foles, but eyes up, tracks the ball, comes down with it. And, and you see, like, this isn't just like a play where he catches it and runs and it's a touchdown. Like, this is a good possession catch. Like, Jenkins gets back to it. This isn't necessarily the easiest catch in the world. You know, he almost gets a hand in there. Uh, we've seen guys like Marcus Valdez Scantling drop plays like this numerous times because they don't have those, you know, those hands um, that some deep ball receivers, you know, not, not all deep ball receivers have because that is their sole trait is like they have the speed to get deep, you know, with more speed comes less ability to catch the football. That's sometimes the way it works. When you look at the guys who are at the top of the league as deep ball receivers, who that is solely the role, like the Nelson Aguilar's of the world. Right. I mean, that's yes. another perfect example. So um, I just, that's why I like this play as you see the, the speed. Will Fuller's another one. Sorry. Well, to exactly. Wrong, yeah. No, no, no. You're absolutely right. Because these are all guys I'm thinking about when you think about uh, comparisons, I guess you, what people would probably at this moment compare Darna Mooney to just, you know, pretty plainly without looking deep into it the average fan would compare him to those guys because they know he has speed and they know you know he, he's targeted deep um but a lot of different skills possessed here phenomenal catch phenomenal play that's one of the better highlights of his year so let's go on to the next one now two things before we, are, we get into the next one yeah right here you said they're even i don't know if you've heard this but in football receivers if we're even we're leaving we're getting right by mm -hmm. him so when the quarterback sees that we're gone and second thing 
You said you play baseball. I've seen that. Okay, anybody that wants to see Kevin track a football or track a baseball, we can absolutely do that. I've seen the guy. He's got some skills, but we'll, we'll get to that another time. Maybe maybe, maybe a Bears player can come on and we'll, we'll get him to challenge Kevin in, uh, in Lake Forest or something like that. We're going to have to get you to challenge Justin Fields, my man. We've seen the throw. Check might. out the Twitter throw of you rolling <laughs> out, doing the exact same thing. Yeah. Uh, no, that would be a good idea, though. You know, YouTube would, video, right? we, we do that, but I uh, appreciate the yes. shout out there. Oh, of course, well. Let's get to the next one. <laughs> All right, we're here in week one of 2020 and i don't have to speak on 2020 we all know what it was covid um you know games being delayed uh games being canceled no preseason no otas no mini camp no training camp no rookie camp none of that so bear in mind this is darnell mooney's first nfl action outside of a zoom meeting which is (laughs) mind-blowing right like (laughs) that is ridiculous to think that and it's not like, you know, I'm not saying he had like 150 yards receiving this game, but just what he did in order for him to step in in an offense where this was Ridley's second year. This was Wims and Miller's third year. Obviously, this was uh, Allen Robinson's third year. But for him to step in the way he did, fantastic job. I mean, for a rookie to, to play as well as he did is when you watch the game outside of the catches he made, just being on the field, being available, um, you know, underst- obviously being trusted to understand the playbook and the correct routes to run. But let's get into the play. Um this is a, a very, very common concept that Matt Nagy liked to run with Mitch. Um, and more often than not, Mitch was running play action, as we see. He's running this play action. And Allen Robinson is going to run this dig to the inside. You'll see him actually against the Giants uh, in week two. They ran it, and this is when Mitch kind of made a really nice throw and A-Rob uh, got up in the air for it. This throw is just a two-man read. We're going – Full on max protection here. After this fake, this uh, fullback is going to come in and clean up anything on the inside. Tariq Cohen is kind of do the same thing. He's going to lick inside out. Mitch is going to turn around and deliver this ball nine times out of 10. But the lane is clogged. Darnell Mooney on the backside, I believe, is running a post curl. I don't really know. But all that means is he's going to take this, this route about, um, I want to say, eight to 10 yards, cut it to 12 at the post, and then turn to the, and then turn to the backside. But there's also something very, very special about what he does here that I want to bring up uh, because I think it's all instinct. So I'm going to let the play run. Trubisky, you see him take those eyes to the right and then back to the left to Mooney. Now, here's what I think is really special. I think this is a post curl because what it looks like is maybe a, a deep zig. Uh, and a zig, all that is, is what Mooney does is he's going to run to the, he's going to run that post slash slant could be run shorter and then pivot back to the outside straight down the line, but he's not coming straight down the line. And I don't think that a, a receiving coach or any offensive playbook is going to ask anyone to cut their momentum, going to a post right back to the way they came. It just doesn't make sense to me. I've never seen that run. So what I think this is, is you see Mitch is falling back. Mitch goes to the right. We all know he, his lower body his lower body was really bad as a quarterback. Falling back, Mooney already understands that this ball is going to come to the backside because that's the way that Mitch's momentum is going. And it just looks like a comeback. That's what the route mm-hmm. looks like. But I think that that was a bad throw based on Mitch falling away. Maybe, it really, maybe this is what the play was called for, and Mitch just made a good throw falling away. But I think this is Darnell Mooney in his first game understanding quarterback momentum, understanding where the ball should be, understanding where his defender is. He's already got him beat to the inside. And if he's stopping to the inside, and if he's stopping here on this curl route and is supposed to come back and put his eyes to the quarterback, I think this is Amani Arroyo. He has a play on this ball. Yeah. But if you shield him okay. back to the outside, yeah, you keep coming back to the outside. Now you got to beat on both sides and make a miss. Get, get the yards after the catch. That's fantastic. Right. And we don't have to preach on how good Darnell Mooney did. We all saw it. But there's these small things that you see in his game. And it's just kind of I mean, we're lucky to have him. But it's like, why? Why was he drafted in the fifth round? Because this is stuff that literally like it's not coached in the NFL. And it, we, we understand that because the, he didn't have any coaching, like I said, outside of a Zoom meeting. Mm-hmm. That's just fantastic instincts, fantastic knowledge uh, of the situation of your quarterback and really your, your first action. So. Yeah, I mean, there, there's you can't coach those instincts, and then you know you look at his change of direction here. Those are also things that are extremely hard to coach. Can you improve your change of direction as a receiver, as an athlete? Yes, you know I do drills like that all 
time. But you see the break that he makes here. You know what? You, what did you call it in the beginning? Um, you know when you break down, beat the drum. Like, beat the drum. Beat the yeah. drum. The way he. Do, I mean, you'll see him do this a lot. But the way he beats the drum here at the thirty. You know, and then you know oh. at, at its biggest, at its largest point, that separation. I mean, that separation is like every any quarterback should get you the ball and this should be a completion without amount of separation i mean just that break is incredible and then he gets it moves to the outside and what what would most receivers do here most receivers would say you know what here i am about to be at the first you know i could probably run out of bounds to get a first down you know what i i take it out of bounds first down bears let's 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 move on to the the next set of downs he is always thinking about creating the greater play you've seen this time and time again that touchdown against the texans is one that comes to mind he gets to the outside says you know what i know this guy's breaking Breaking hard towards the sideline. All it takes is one jab step. Boom. One jab step back inside. And he gains what? 10 more yards on this? 10 yes. more yards that, um, you know, in an offense last year that was struggling so much seems extremely significant. Um, yes. But that's what that's what I like to see there is not only is the athleticism incredible, but just that mindset. You know what? Let, let's get more yards. Let's do more with that. I think you're going to see his yards after catch this year really really go up especially uh, once you see these designs and once you see more accurate balls that will give him a little bit more space to move um you're going to start to see more plays like this but yeah that is uh the instincts you mentioned too i mean that's something i didn't even think about um and, and the way you describe that is just it, it's it's incredible like for a guy here in his first game i mean it's just un coachable um and those are sort of the characteristics that you know that that make you really really excited especially when you think about okay going into year two if he can do this without coaching what can he do with a full training camp what can he do with otas with exactly. a lot of speed receivers around him as well opening up area with a good quarterback like yeah it's, it's, it's i don't know man i don't know we, scary, we might right? be looking, it's scary it's scary for nfl yeah. defenses so so this is once again the Bears running a Yankee concept, um, like the one we saw earlier with the Saints, but this time Mr. Trubisky is the quarterback. So we got a little bit of a boot action going on. Doesn't really change much for Mooney, um, who is lined up down here. Um, and Allen Robinson, you see, is in motion already, is going to motion to um, an offset, essentially tight end. He's going to come in here and block. We're going to see the line full slide this way. And I believe Jimmy Graham is going to come and crack this backside and protect. But with the routes, none of that is important, uh, essentially, for Mooney. All he's going to do is run a corner post. Wims is going to come down here, run underneath, and they're going to high low this safety. So that's all we're going to see right here. But on the last one we saw in the deep one, Nick Foles made He threw a pretty good ball. This one is all Darnell Mooney. Let's watch it. Robinson motions in, comes to protect. Mitch has got all the time in the world. Throws it kind of off balance. Mooney reaches over the guy and makes the catch. Now, this is what I'm talking about when we when we say like these Nelson Aguilar's, the Will Fullers, mm -hmm. but those are not really catches that those guys are making. Nelson Aguilar and Will Fuller, I think, are really good wide receiver twos, but their consistency has always been their issue. Darnell Mooney's best thing about him on a week-to-week -week basis was his consistency. He was making these catches a lot. He wasn't always – they're only always think, showing up in the stat sheet because their plays were not always to be made, right? Uh, essentially, this isn't even – this is not always the correct throw, especially because this safety is bailing out with him here. So what Mitch could do is throw whims right here in this in this hole. Um, but he wants the deep play. Not going to not gonna bag on that. I mean, he is one-on-one -on -one with a safety. Gets inside. I'm going to rewind it. Mooney's going to get inside the corner. Play back to the outside. Kevin King is completely lost. We've seen that before. And this safety, Darnell Mooney and this safety are one-on-one. -on -one. This ball is underthrown. Safety doesn't make a great play on it. But that freeze frame right there. Unbelievable. <laughs> falling, falling toward the end zone. Ball is underthrown. Your body's going back. And you're twisting and contorting on a, a plane, like I'm getting like mathematical here, but per perpendicular or parallel to the ground and you're getting your hands that way. Like I made that sound way more complicated than like what it is and what it looks like, but this is a phenomenal catch. This is that that's like otherworldly stuff. And I think he actually got shaken up from it, which um, I'll bring up later is kind of his frame actually does kind of hurt him. Like you bounce off Chicago ground in, in December in a game that's going to hurt. You know, it's going to hurt no matter how big you are, but a, a, a smaller body is going to feel it more. 
But nonetheless, great move, great catch. This is not really a ball that should be thrown to him. Like I said, I, I mean, maybe maybe a guy with a stronger arm, but you can see Mitch is Mitch puts his all into this throw, and it's a yeah, it's a long out. throw. Yeah, it's a long throw. It's you know rolling left, throwing back to his right. It's not an easy throw at all. It's probably not one he should be making. But Mooney bails him out. This is what I'm talking about when I say a guy that can bail out a young quarterback. We saw it with Mitch. I don't think Justin is going to need it as much, but he will. Every quarterback needs a guy that can bail them out. We Patrick Mahomes has two guys that can do it, you know, if not three. Um, so with, with this one, this is just this is we we saw the speed on display, we saw the twitch on display, the route running, the knowledge. This one is catch point action. This one is going up, making a play. And, and in high school, I know I bring up my kind of high school teachings and, my, and coaches a lot, but interceptions are on the receiver in, in, in my high school you have like if you have to cause an opi you cause it and they don't get the ball we value the football we don't turn it over now i don't think this, this safety makes a play on the ball to turn it over but regardless that guy's not getting the ball because donald mooney's hands are over the top falling away great catch uh, i mean what else can i say great catch great everything great great body control great tracking the ball yes. you know that's that's everything is is there good hands that's what I was going to say. This is another play where you see this tracking just absolutely phenomenally because what happens if he doesn't track the ball well here? He's running full sprint. I mean, he's probably reaching near 20 miles per hour here on this, if not higher. Um, what is easier for him is to just keep running and let the ball fall in front of him or, or let the DB you know, pick it off or, or tip it. But right here, he puts his eyes up and then he kind of comes back, you know, comes back to the ball a little bit. That doesn't actually come back to it but kind of waits for it goes out and goes out and get in every time i see this play in slow motion the freeze frame that you did is unbelievable because what a lot of receivers will do in this situation is they'll still let this fall under the lap they'll still let this try to you know catch it like this falling back like that for him like for him to get his hands out there and and not only just get his hands to that position but not let it not let the force of that ball while he's coming down fall into him um you know this is where a play you'll see if he does that he falls to the ground ball pops out Right. We've seen this a number of times. Right. If he doesn't have the the hand strength here to stick it, just stick it right there. He lets it fall into his lap, falls, hits the ground. Like you said, hard Chicago ground ball bounces up and completion. We see this time and time again with receivers. So every time I watch this play and I see him track this ball and then just boom, sticky hands to go out and get this. It is it's it's incredible. And this is like you said, you are not seeing this from speed receivers. You His possession catch ability is incredible. And this was something that, you know, a, a couple of people talk talked about coming out of college was look this guy can can make incredible possession catches spectacular catch ability he did it a few times at Tulane he did against the Giants he, he I think we'll have another clip where we'll have him doing doing it but he's not yeah. afraid to go up and get the ball right like you mentioned right. his frame would a player like that be afraid sometime to go up and get it because they're fearful of of what that may do not Darnell Mooney he's gonna yep. go up and get it he's gonna put his body on the line to make a play like this uh like you said in a cold weather game go up come down I mean it with the defender there it's this is 10 out of 10 absolutely and, 10 out of 10 you know this is his first season in cold weather I, I I my memory is not recalling where he's from uh before college but he played in Tulane which is in New Orleans I believe that's a Sun Belt um football team and all you know they're playing in the, in the south uh the whole time they're not playing in weather like this they're not playing in weather uh wind coming off the lake this is i mean this is a really good adjustment and we're kind of putting a lot on on the weather and the ground but it, it really is different playing in in, in mm -hmm. you know warmer climates than it is here in chicago one thing about his hands i think a good way to describe them is, is plucky they're they're plucky hands he goes out plucks the ball, brings it back. Uh, I learned that that term from my, my region, Scott Lear at the draft Bible, shout out to Lorenz, but that that's a, this is a, a plucky catch. I mean, he's, he's not, he's not catching this ball and, and like bringing it down to his hip, like you said, and, and maybe juggling it. This ball is, he's putting his hands out. He's bringing it into his chest. That's plucky hands. And he, he has to break stride uh, obviously to make the catch. But this is, like I said, this is great body control. I mean, a guy running that fast down the field, got to track the ball at the last minute, obviously can't jump off two legs, can't stop his momentum, makes a great play. Can't ask for much more. Can't ask for any more at all. This, that's, a, that's a great play. This, Like I said, this ball should not have been thrown. It could have been picked off. He makes a play. Now we're first and goal inside the five. I don't even know if the – I don't think the Bears scored a touchdown on this drive. Oh, I, I of course did. we didn't. 
Uh, I, I kept think thinking only, about that. Yeah. There's no way had so I, many field goals this game, right? Yeah. Uh, this is a winnable game. Um, and they should have won it. I want to say they should have, but they could have won it. Um, but yeah. one more thing before we go to the next clip. You've mentioned Plucky. Uh, that doesn't come out of nowhere. Yes, there's natural ability, but Donna Mooney's first purchase when he was a rookie, got his working contract, was a jugs machine. When they were stuck in a hotel during training camp, he set up a jugs machine machine in the hotel and there's videos of him just you know using the jugs machine in the hotel first purchase was that like this dude is dedicated to to strengthening his hands like it's it's it just shows his dedication that the first thing he would buy when he could have gone and bought a lamborghini or ferrari whatever the hell he wanted that cost a lot more money and probably would have looked better on instagram he went out and, and bought a jugs machine because he cares that much about the game so um i just think that's really cool and that's why you see these plucky type plays it, it doesn't come out of nowhere it's because he puts the hard work in and he you know was on that thing you know probably when practice closes he's like you know what let me go to the jugs machine for a few more hours you know this is this is what a dedicated player does so shout out to him for that but yeah we're getting facts left and right here we're getting i'm dropping kevin lap the <laughs> receiver facts he's dropping darnell mooney <laughs> purchases of his first contract i didn't know that i yeah. didn't know that that's that's cool yeah um, that's cool stuff he's, he's obviously a down-to-earth kid uh you know obviously we haven't talked to him but you know sometimes you can just kind of gauge these guys and the kind of person they right. are and if you're buying a jugs machine and there's your first purchase fifth round pick got a chip on your shoulder clearly it's working out for him and we're happy for him we're going to go to a drag route against detroit so this is where we're going to highlight a play where uh it's not just the deep ball ability okay he can do a, he can do more than that and Matt recognizes that this is why you're going to see him run drag routes and underneath routes um and all these types of things so let's go here against detroit this, this was um this was in chicago so this was a little bit later in the season i think right this was in chicago yeah, yes this, this was, was in yeah. chicago this was the game that the bears absolutely blew yeah absolutely blew this game but we're not gonna talk about that so uh <laughs> uh here i'm gonna i'll let it play the bears are running a, a shallow cross concept uh and and often uh, teams will run it with a dig over the top but the bears are just running it with, with a ball route uh where the receiver will just come and run a spot route he'll just sit right in front of the ball which is what you see anthony miller do so i'll draw this one up and we'll see Anthony Miller, who's who's lined up on the slot over here off screen. I, I think that the, the end zone view on this one does a better job of showing what Mooney, who's over here, does. I think it does a better job of showing what he does. So Miller is going to come over the top of these linebackers, sit right here over the ball. That's a poorly drawn uh, route for me. But regardless, Mooney's going to come underneath. All this is is a zone of the high-low. Um, we're going to high-low this middle, middle field defender. doesn't matter. It could be this linebacker. It could be this safety. Um, it doesn't matter. And, and what I what I want to say, I'll, I'll let it run here as we'll see. Um, Mooney's going to run on the drag. Romeo Choir kind of gets an arm into him, but he stays on balance. Miller's going to come right here. He's open, but Mitch is getting pressure up the middle. Detroit calls a really nice cross dog blitz, and they have this safety insert right here. Mitch throws it off his back foot, gets the ball out. This is third down, by the way. I don't think I brought that up, but this is third down in the fourth quarter, third and seven, I want to say. Mooney makes the catch. I think this is Trey Flowers out here. He's going to win this race every time, but just the fact that he does and can get upfield. I mean, a lot of guys can win this race and we're going to hype him up here, but a lot of guys can win this race, just get the first down and, and get pushed out of bounds. But he's turning that corner very, very quickly. And this first down marker is here. What at the, the 38? He's at the 35 before he has to make a move on anyone, right? Like we could get to the 38, 37, 36 we're out of bounds with like a, another receiver and a lot of receivers in the NFL are fast, but Darno Mooney is, is really kind of a different kind of football fast. Any look at him, finish the play. Mm -hmm. Look at him, finish that. You know, he he's, I think he's like 175 pounds listed at, which is very tiny for an NFL receiver for guys that have to take on these hits. Look at him, finish that. That's a good job. That, that, that's a lot of effort, but what I want to bring up with this is it's uh, you know people are gonna look at Kelly and Kevin like this is just a drag route this is mm -hmm. just Darnell Mooney beating a linebacker to the corner yes but in the NFL with younger quarterbacks Matt Nagy's going to cut the field in spaces for Justin Fields so he's gonna say he's not gonna have Justin Fields go through a lot of full field reads we had him going through wide cross last time that's a read he's familiar with going through the full field he's not gonna have him do a lot of that just and, and frankly that's just not what Matt Nagy runs a lot he's going to cut the field into three parts he's going to cut it into the middle into the left side and the right side so if if Matt Nagy says hey there's 
middle field uh, open. We got two safeties. So we're either going to go right in the middle of the field or we're going to go to the edges. Justin Fields is going to pick one of those sides. If the middle field is closed, this is a middle field closed option. This is this is one we're going to run against one high safety, which we see here. So Justin Fields now is reading just the middle of the field, which is making it easier on any quarterback. Mitch, obviously here included. But for a young guy, we got Darnell Mooney coming across the middle. We got a guy like Aaron, Allen Robinson who's going to be playing this slot position that Anthony Miller is in, who's a super reliable receiver, good hands over the middle. Justin Fields, is only, if he's only going one to two to run, that's very solid. That's keeping him out of harm's way. That's keeping it simple for him. Not only is he very accurate underneath, we put his athleticism on display. This is just catering to him, right? This blitz is coming. Mitch does a good job here. You know, I'm not going to say that like, oh, Justin Fields makes this play better. Mitch does a good job here. Yeah. But this is Mooney doing a good job. And this is evidence of what I said. He can bail guys out. He's very versatile. We saw him go deep twice. We saw him make an intermediate catch now. Or we've seen him make an intermediate catch once. Now we're seeing him underneath on a third and seven take a ball uh, that he caught basically at the line of scrimmage, make a guy miss, get to the corner, bam, that's easy. That's pitch and catch, right? Like if that's in a scouting meeting, Justin Fields is in a scouting meeting uh, on like a Thursday for a Sunday game, Matt Nagy's going through film. He says, third and eight, where we see one high, you switch to, to shallow cross, you know, whatever they call it. You look, you read that middle field. Obviously I trust you read the middle field defender, you get the ball there, easy, so, you know, pitch and catch. And obviously easier said than done, but Darnell Mooney's going to make it a lot easier uh, on a young quarterback being, being, being this receiver that he is. And you mentioned, you know, you know, why are we showing a drag route? You know, it's this, you know, this and that, well, like Kellen said, this is versatility. You know, you, I don't know if you know about, you know, about next year's hats, obviously there's a stat called average targeted air yards. Okay. He ranks 40th in that. And you're thinking, well, why am I talking about a stat? He ranks 40th in because that shows that he's not one dimensional. The one di uh, one dimensional, if I could speak. The guys on the top of that list, Nelson Aguilar, Marquez Valdez Scantling, Henry Ruggs. Mooney isn't just a deep threat. He's doing other things. Matt Nagy is designing drag routes for him. Matt Nagy is designing slant routes, in routes, zigs, all you know, comebacks, the one we saw earlier. Like it's this is not a one-dimensional player. And that's why I wanted to show this clip, not only because it's incredible from a speed standpoint and athleticism standpoint, but they're going to run these types of things often. And NFL defenses are going to have to be conscious of that as well. Uh, and that's just where it makes it really, really hard. Why does it make it really, really hard for an NFL defense? number one because they like they know his ability now so what are cornerbacks doing they're playing off on him a far amount in fact so far that darno mooney led the league in cushion which is a next gen stat that measures the distance in yards measured between a wide receiver and tight end and the defender they're lined up against at uh at the time of snap on all targets led the league in cushion so that cornerback cornerbacks they're respecting his deep ball ability right they are but what does that do that makes it, you know, that, you know, he had, if you give him an option route or, you know, Justin Fields can hop out at the line. So, you know what, this guy's seven yards. I think the exact number on the cushion, uh, he leads it. I got to see what the exact, I think it's 7.6. I think it's 7.6. 7.6 7. yards. Kellen, you as a corp, like, is that not heaven for you to see That's, to see that much cushion at times we call that gifts we call those gift <laughs> routes okay we call those gift routes the guy's giving me seven yards of cushion obviously he's doing that because he respects my guy i'm giving him a pitch i'm giving him a slant a quick out hell i mean we see guys one-on-one -on -one now on the outside if they give that much cushion they'll go under center just flick the ball out because all they have to do is make the corner miss and it's mm -hmm. an easy first down when you when you can be that guy that, that kind of demands that respect I mean, the, the, the possibilities are, are endless. And once again, we say it makes it easier on a young quarterback. And, and Darnell Mooney has room to grow, right? Like, he's, he's right. A, he was a rookie last year. We are, we are not looking at a, at a finished product. Now, I wouldn't say, like, he, he's on the – like, he's like a, a Henry Ruggs running like a 4-2 and had a really bad rookie year, and we can really see a lot more from him. He was really productive already, but we can still see so much more. And now, like I said, he's going to be a clear-cut number two. He doesn't have to share number two reps with Miller, with Wims. He's going to be the clear cut number two behind Allen Robinson. Um, and, and next year, I mean, you know, Allen Robinson, quite frankly, is probably going after next season. You know, the Bears just didn't sign a long term contract with him. So if Mooney has to step into that wide receiver run world, one role, you know, right now it might not look like he can do it, but he's just really solid wide receiver, too. But we'll see what, what happens, man. I mean, his ceiling is, is, is truly untapped on, on a production standpoint.
No, it is. And, and I'm not saying this guy's going to be Tyreek Hill, but I think the comparison you're going to start to see is you hit on it. You said, okay, he's got that much cushion. What, it, you know, say hitch route, right? Okay, you give him the ball. You know, that that's a quick route where the defender's not going to have a lot of time to come back to the ball. So now, now you run the hitch route. The cushion was already 7.6. The defender probably gets there, you know, two yards maybe, right? Five yards of cushion. And then this is where it relates to this play is, you know, what he can do in open space. And in that other one we showed against the Lions, what he can do in open space spaces you just need to give this guy the ball and with five yards of open space he's he's gonna turn it into 15 20 like you see right here like that's all you need to do is give this guy open space and that's why i wanted to compare him to tyree hill he will not be tyree hill anytime soon that is the best receiver in my opinion the best receiver in the nfl he will not be there in the next few years it would take him you know a, a lot of development in a long time but what tyree hill does best is he gets open and then he creates from that he has so much space because defenses have no idea how to handle him because he's a receiver that we've never seen before in the NFL. He gets open with that much cushion and, you know, the rest, he, he makes magic happen. I think you're going to start to see more of that from Darnell Mooney as much as long as he has this much space between him and a defender. We've already seen two clips here now of him doing it is, you know, creating after the catch yak, right? Yards after catch. Um, so Yak, yak, yak. That is, uh, that's the word you're going to start seeing for Donna Mooney here if he's getting that much cushion. But um, anything else on this one? No, Kevin, you keep coming with stats, man. I keep, you keep saying stuff I didn't know. It's the jugs machine. Now it's the next gen stats, 40th in air yards. And, and I didn't even know that cushion yardage was a stat. And he led the league in that. That's, that's insane. I know, I know Tyreek Hill plays in the slot a lot, and guys don't give as much right. cushion in the slot. But for him to get more cushion than, than Tyree kill, then, you know, I know Henry Ruggs had a down year, but I mean, he's one of the fastest players in the league. Will, you know, Will Fuller, uh, another one. I mean, wow. Well, I, that, that, that's, <laughs> right. that's pretty surprising. And um, another, you know, I think that's why it's good that Allen Robinson is moving to the slot. Now Mooney doesn't have uh -huh. to, he stays on the outside. He can, he can take advantage of that cushion. And if guys want to press him and we saw him beat Janoris Jenkins earlier on that, on that post route against the saints, we saw him beat the Packers again in off coverage on the same route on the other side. I mean, there's really not a lot he can't do. All right, that's a perfect transition because we're going to go to a play that shows press coverage. You guys have all seen it. It's gone viral like every other day I see it on Twitter and TikTok pop up. <laughs> Kellen already knows what play I'm talking about because we see it so many damn times. And it's probably it's probably the most like celebrated incompletion in NFL history, um, yes. and rightfully so. And, um, you know, look, like you can't, like this is a good play. It's not his fault that the that the the ball wasn't there for him. But this is uh you know this is here you go. Look like look at the start of this play. Look at the cushion, right? This is why I say yep. it's a good transition. Look at the cushion. You see it. But this is a play where you know okay that much cushion. He's giving him that much cushion to escape a deep, deep ball route. But tell us what Darno Mooney does anyway. Makes a miss, man. Like. I could, I could break this down and, and, you know, I could talk about his hips, his eyes, his, his feet, you know, but this is, this is demanding respect from, in my opinion, you know, I think tier one of corners right now in the league are Jalen Ramsey and Jair Alexander. Mm -hmm. I think those two are clear cut the two best or cornerbacks in the league. Now, I mean, that's just demanding respect. And every, like we said, Kevin, Everyone has seen this clip. This is probably the most celebrated incompletion in the history of the National Football League, just because of a rookie fifth round guy from Tulane making probably the best cornerback in the league. It completely looks stupid. Like he didn't just beat him. He absolutely made Ramsey look dumb. And this is kind of the this is kind of the, the coverage that he has to play. Right. He has to play kind of off coverage as, as aggressive as Jalen Ramsey is with this call. You know, I, I believe. Uh, this is cover one and they're sending, they're sending a blitz and they just get a, a free rusher here, which is on the bears. They have five and they don't pick up five, mm -hmm. but this is just, you know, could Nick Foles have made a better throw? Yes, absolutely. But this is, this is a tough play to be made, especially with a guy in your face. He, he does what he can, but I mean, Jalen Ramsey gets caught peeking and I don't think that as disciplined as he is, or as aggressive as he is, people don't understand how how much discipline it takes to be a corner. And Jalen Ramsey has that discipline. And, I, and if we see Jair Alexander tape at another time, we'll look at that too. But cause especially because he's a Packers guy, this right here for him to break on this and peek into the backfield, and Mooney is already gone. Like he he's even probably even a step ahead, and Jalen Ramsey's eyes are still in the backfield. This is 
ridiculous how stupid he makes him look like this is not you know we, we people make fun of guys like Marshawn Lattimore or, or, or you know uh, you know guys are just Kevin King guys that get burned a lot like Darnell Mooney made him look just like that and can he do it consistently maybe not you know like we said Jalen Ramsey is the best corner in the league but look at him everything is a fade until it isn't that's how receiver that's what receivers are supposed to be taught everything is a fade until it isn't that's what the db should think that's what you should think that's what everyone in the stadium should think until you break it off his hips do not sink until look at this that's one foot on the ground two three boom his he's about to turn around right gives a head fake so look one two stutter pat of the feet put the head inside put the feet inside contort the body make him look dumb that's great (laughs) <laughs> that that's it's so you know we make it look so so you know just like oh it's a stop and go on on like tiktok and twitter you know with the angle where you know with the angle that's not all 22 it's looking at it right from behind ramsey that that angle shows it just as well but on this all 22 i mean his body is like completely going this way for a moment i didn't pause it at the right time but i mean there's not really like i said i mean i said all i can say he just made Jalen Ramsey arguably the best cornerback in the league look absolutely like like a, a pee wee football player trying to cover him. And and why is that so important? Because you know Jalen Ramsey is a smart player, right? The dude does his homework. He's you know probably one of the smartest cornerbacks in the NFL. Why does he bite on this so hard? Because he knows how good Darnell Mooney is at running the curl route and the comeback and coming back to the ball. And, you know, like Kellen keeps talking about the breakdown and beating the drum, he watched the tape. He sees how you know he's seen at this point. You know, seven or eight. I don't remember exactly what week this was uh, i want to say it's around like mid-season again he's seen about a, a half a season of darna mooney tape knows what he does but this is now okay if he if if he if he can do you know this is probably i didn't see him run many stop and goes right i didn't see him run many throughout the year i don't i don't know if this really was the first one he ran or if it wasn't you know i, I couldn't give you those answers after all the facts that I've given you that's not one um but cornerbacks now like you too. mentioned you <laughs> you mentioned the discipline and this is a situation where I don't care. Yeah, if you're the best in Jalen Ramsey or if you're the worst, like this is one of the hardest plays to make as a cornerback, especially when you sell it as hard as he does. So now if they're giving him, if they're going to continue to give him this cushion, seven yards here, which is exactly, it, it looks like it's almost even more than that uh, is what Jalen Ramsey is giving him. For a cornerback to to make a play on Darna Mooney in any capacity on this type of route is it's extreme. It's, I don't see it happening like this. They should exploit receivers numerous times this year on the stop and goal because of how good he is at selling it. And because of how talented he is on those comeback routes, on those core routes, defenders have to respect that. And that's what you're seeing Jalen Ramsey do is he's like, you know what? Here they are in the red zone. It wouldn't be entire, not in the red zone, in their own end zone. It wouldn't be entirely logical for them to go deep here. Get some yards, give yourself some room to work with back in your end zone, right? That's what you guys do. You, you know, you give yourself room to work with so you don't have to make things hard on yourself back then. You don't want to deal with the safety. You don't want to deal for pressure in the end zone. But it's a great, it's a great call. And it's just a great sell. Um, so you're going to start, you're going to, I think you're going to see the stop and go a lot more because of his ability to break it down and making a cornerback like Jalen Ramsey look foolish like this. He's going to do that to guys who aren't as talented as Jalen Ramsey. And mm-hmm. hopefully this year, the ball will be in his lap and this will be a 95 yard so. touchdown. I hope so. And, and this cushion, you know, we, uh, this is perfect that you said it was perfect and it is. This cushion it is perfect for double moves because when, mm-hmm. when if Jalen Ramsey is in his hip pocket here, you can't I don't know it. if Darno Mooney. Yeah, I don't know if that's that space is created, but if he's going to demand this from the best corner in the league, as I've said a million times, that that's going to be double move city. And here it's just a little stop and go. Right. Like he sells it so well that Jalen Ramsey, like I said, his eyes are literally in the backfield as Darno Mooney is behind him. His eyes are still in the backfield as Darno Mooney is behind him. That is a that's a that's a great sell point not a lot not all receivers can do that all receivers can run a stutter or go they can run a double move julio jones can do it and, and he wins jump ball routes but julio jones isn't separating like this not saying that he couldn't he's a freak of nature he's one of the best to ever do it but what i'm saying is as a rookie Darnell moody doing this to a jalen ramsey is absolutely fantastic this is just great technique this is great use of head movement of hand movement of eyes of hips of feet all from head to toe this is just perfect from him and it's a great use of, and it's a great 
timing too on it, right? Like this, this stutter and go is happening at the right time. Ramsey's at the top of his drop. He's trying to break on it. He's anticipating this being just a first down or first down route, right? Like I think this is second down, I, I want to say. And he's, we're trying to get toward the sticks. We're trying to get positive yards. Ramsey's not saying, oh, it's second and long. They're going to go deep. Darnell Mooney just times it perfectly. I mean, we could have we could have done uh, we could have done an out and up. We could have done yes. a, a sluggo. We could have done anything. I mean, any any one of those double moves. I mean, he could have probably executed them all if they're giving him that cushion. It's fine. That you what you just said the out and up. You're going to see that a lot because if he's this good at his change of direction, which he is, the cornerback's going to sell the same way Jalen Ramsey did on the out route. You know, they're going to say, all right, he's going to if he's going to. Head fake back this way that hard. What's the cornerback going to do? They're going to slide back down. They're going to slide down to the sideline. And then Darnell Mooney, as quick as he is, can say, okay, bye. Boom. One jab, boom. Jabs out, takes two steps, jabs up. I mean, this is why, like, it's not it, it, it's not just the cushion. It's to take advantage of that. Like, not obviously, a lot of receivers get cushioned. Not every receiver takes advantage of it like he does. So why is he doing that? Why is he unique? Because of that change of direction, because of that stutter, because of that unique athleticism that he possesses, he's able to sell it so hard. So we're not going to go anymore on this code because I know it's silly and I know it's not a, a completion, but it displays, you know, just his pure athleticism, you know, just doing it against one of the best in the game, you have to highlight it because people want to see yeah. that validation. You know what I mean? Uh, quarterback slicing up the best defense in the NFL. You're going to carve, you're going to eat that up all you can. Um, and that's why people talk about this clip so much, not because it was a good move, but because it's against Jalen Ramsey, not only Jalen Ramsey, a guy who, who talks a little bit, likes to say things. And I think uh, he said on Instagram this summer, like, Oh, it wasn't a completion. Why are we talking about this clip so much? It doesn't even matter. It wasn't completed, but dude, like, it does matter. You got burnt. I don't care. It's not his fault. The ball yeah. wasn't there. You got <laughs> burnt. There's no defending against it. At the end of the day, did the Rams win the football game? Yes. I'll credit to you for that. But mm -hmm. you got toasted. Admit it. We'll see you week one this year. Bears, Rams, Sunday night football. Let's yeah. go. It's funny because uh, Jalen Ramsey was only arguing with Bears fans. Darnell Mooney was completely silent exactly. for like the entire thing. He he, he was not present on exactly. Twitter for it. But um. We, we've celebrated in completion enough. We'll get on to our final clip. Uh, this one I picked out. You, you've picked out uh, most mm -hmm. of these clips um, and asked me to kind of break them down. But this one I kind of picked out because I just I was I was just kind of watching, trying to find stuff. And I found this one. Um, and it's Darnell Mooney against the Packers uh, that when we were playing them on the road, I believe. Uh, very, very, very ugly football game for Bears fans. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we were all kind of. We know how we get. We we hype things up. Mitch was coming back that first game, and uh, mm. we were like, "Hey, Mitch is back, Maserati Mitch time, baby!" And didn't happen. We lost the game. But <laughs> the important thing uh, is this: this is another kind of one of Darnell Mooney being a, a very very savvy football player. And what I mean by that it is him understanding where he is on the field understanding where he has to get understanding the situation so for context the bears are losing i think 27 to 3 we're under two minutes bears have to go down and get points we're already losing the game it's 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 slipping away we're not even a half time yet so we got to get down the field we got to score okay so here's Darnell mooney he just motioned right here at the top a condensed set a condensed set which just means that we're tight here right Darnell mooney and cole Kometa right here i believe this is Anthony Miller and Ellen Robinson down here were condensed. So we got a lot of room to work with to get to the sideline. That's exactly what Darnell Mooney is going to do. He's going to run an out route, deep out, good throw by Mitch, but a per like a great catch. What we, we call it plucky, right? A plucky catch. Darnell Mooney plucks this one out of the air. But when you watch it, okay, I'm going to pause it. He's still in bounds. I think this is Kevin King here on him. Kevin King rushes and finishes this play. Bears have to either run up to the line and go hurry up in, in a situation where they could really use some structure down. Time is running short. They're down a lot. Donald Mooney, he is scooting out of bounds. Very, very subtle. And you're going to look at me like, Kellen, like that is like, it's just, he's just scooting out of bounds. Yes, I understand that. But again, a rookie in his first year, this is the, the back half of the season now. So he's an experienced rookie, but he's still not a veteran. He's still in his first NFL season. Okay, in college football, right here, he catches that ball. The clock is still running. 
Uh, it stops because it's a first down, but that clock is running once that ball is set. Okay. You're down on contact or you're down when that knee is down. Okay. In the NFL, it's not like that. Someone has to touch you. He's out, he's down. He gets out of bounds. Now the bears can huddle. And now Mitch plays with an structure. Now Matt Nagy doesn't have to rush a call. We don't have to spike the ball. We don't have to burn a timeout. That's very, very heady play after a diving catch that I didn't even mention that I really didn't talk about. This is just, Darnell Mooney making a great play. Kevin King is way backed off here. He hasn't beat here. His leverage is still at the inside. Darnell Mooney is going to undercut that leverage, get underneath. Get, he's already past the first down marker, which is big. We got first and 10. We're going to get another one moving the chains. Makes a phenomenal. This is a full out diving catch. This isn't like this is full body extension. OK, his entire body is off the ground. His toes are not touching the grass here. Plucks the ball out of the air. Plucky hands, like we said scooting out of bounds to stop that clock. I believe there was about a minute and a half, a little bit over a minute and a half left in the first half. Like I said, we didn't win this game. We were never going to, but that's just a heady play. Okay. If this game, if this is the fourth quarter, okay. In this same situation and it's a one score game or a tie game, Darnell Mooney's making this play. We're talking about it. Like it really, really matters because it does. This is just heady, heady awareness from a rookie. Yes. I want to say they ended up scoring on this drive too. I believe, I believe yeah. they ended up scoring before the half and maybe that doesn't happen. It doesn't get out of bounds, but I think, you know, you're highlighting the mental aspect of his game here. Something that's hard to find oftentimes in rookies uh, and sometimes hard to find often in NFL players. And you look now at the difference between uh, him and Anthony Miller, you know, you could have all talent in the world. Anthony Miller is extremely talented, you know, coming out of college, there was a lot of promise for this dude extremely fast extremely good route runner and i'm not here to crap on anthony miller but one of the things i think is the reason why he's on a different team now is he didn't develop as quickly mentally as maybe a guy like john mooney has and sometimes that was evident he would run the wrong route um you know you would see certain things in his game where you would question uh you know if he's doing the right thing at the line of scrimmage certain things like that right and i'm not going to nitpick on that but you know the mental aspect is on display here consistently with Mooney. We highlighted in this clip, we highlighted uh, in one of the other clips as well, I believe, um, you know, just the instincts and just knowing in, in this situation, you know, what to do uh, after you, like Kellen says, after you make a play like this, uh, I would probably get up, you know, throw my hands in the air. like flex a little bit like, yeah, I just made a great play. He's like, nope, let's scoot out of bounds. Let's get on to the next. Like, let's keep going. He's he does, he's a guy that doesn't, you know, show about too much, kind of keeps it within himself, makes the play. Okay, great, great play on to the next one. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. In a four possession game that the Bears very well could have exactly. given up at this point. Exactly. You know? That's a great point. You'll see a lot of players in the league uh, check out at times, you know, and you could say that's the fault of the coaching staff or whatever sometimes players are just wired that way you're down 27 3 you're not gonna win the game aaron Rodgers on the other side of the field it might get worse you know okay i'll catch it whatever we're not gonna win this game anyway that's some players mentality um are they wrong for having that mentality no i mean i don't know i'm not gonna criticize that but to, to be that engaged, I think, Kellen's what you're talking, to be that engaged in a game like this where there's no fans in the stadium, you know, this was a point of the season where, you know, were the playoffs in sight? Yes. Were they likely? No. You, you know, it, it wasn't a lot. Was a lot, a lot felt like it was on the line. But when you're down 27 to three, you know, the, the hopes are waning away. You know, I, I just think you're absolutely right when you say that. I mean, that just kind of clicked in my mind, like for him to think of that in this moment that's special man it's uncoachable it's unteachable yeah. and that's where that's that's that, that's the common theme right uncoachable yep. skills yep this is a really good route too we're not going to talk it about is. it too much but the, like that speed cut his, his right foot is in the ground here uh, he's not breaking down to try and make this like a, a super fine cut i mean he's he's getting three yards on that speed cut and by far kevin king has no shot of beating him to the corner not a not a chance great way to beat that leverage great cut great hips Great catch, great awareness. I mean, we kind of put, you know, we're hyping him up and, you know, I'm sure he's a rookie. So he had bad plays. He had stuff where he could yeah, fix, sure. but like we, you know, everyone does. Everyone had, you know, mistakes their rookie year, but honestly, I don't know if we saw too many from Darnell Mooney. We didn't, like I said, we didn't see a lot of drops. You know, we don't know what the playbook looks like. So we don't know if he was running the right or wrong thing, but honestly, it seemed like he was in the right place more than he was in the wrong place. And, and he's making plays like this, diving, getting out of bounds, keeping his team in the game when, when very clearly things were not looking good, 
you know, uh, the Packers at this point might have been, you know, were probably like top three in the power rankings, one of the best teams in football. It's a lot of stuff that we said, Kevin, you there's just there's things that are in some football players that are uncoachable and, and stuff like this, where you understand the game, you understand the situation and you put your team, you know, in the NFL, you're playing for a paycheck. You know, people care. People like football in the NFL, but this isn't like you're playing like this is for my team. Like not everyone plays like that in the NFL. Not oh, I'm playing for the city of Chicago. I'm playing for the Bears organization. No, a lot of guys are playing for a paycheck. A lot of guys are playing to keep their families afloat, which obviously in their own right is exactly what you're supposed sure. to do. You have to you have to make a living. The guy, you know, a rookie in in his maybe 11th, 12th game again making a diving catch in Lambo, you know, in the tundra. You know, it's not it's not snowing. It pro- I don't think it was super cold, but this was still winter. This was late November, early December, I think making a catch, diving full on the field, getting out of bounds. Great play. Great play. Um, that's I think that's going to do it for our close, right? We don't have any others. Nope, we're good. But, and, and, and you know, one thing to be kind of hit on, it's one thing to be noted, like, yeah, we're not showing, you know, the flaws of his game here. That's not what we're going to do on some of these. We'll, we'll do it at some video at some point. We'll probably, I think we're going to break down a Justin Fields uh, tape of him against Northwestern, came against the Indiana where he, through three picks and break that down. Um, the the Darna Mooney isn't perfect. We're not saying Darna Mooney is the number one receiver in the NFL. We're not saying he's, you know, you know, five tools, full best, you know, perfect, great score, 10 out of 10. Um, but we're highlighting what he can do, what he has, how he is unique. And I think that's what I really liked about this video here is, you know, you saw him do things that other receivers do, but you, you saw him do things. You saw him do a number of things that not all receivers do together. A lot of receivers can uh, run routes really well. A lot of receivers have great change of direction. A lot of receivers have great ball skills. A lot of receivers have great hands. A lot of receivers have great instincts. Not a lot of receivers have all of those things in one, especially when you consider his his deep uh, threat ability. Like it's it's that's why it's exciting. And you know, again, we're from a Bears fan base, and we're gonna talk in that vein when we do these breakdowns. Um, and it's it's hard not to get you know at times a little bit excited and biased, but. Um, you know, th- there's a reason why this guy is is so, you know, loved by the fan base right now. And there's a reason why people believe that he is slotted to have an a thousand yard season. The fantasy footballers are going crazy over him as they rightfully should. Um, we just, we, you know, I think we saw that in all those clips and Kellen with the knowledge showing, you know, not only what he does as a receiver, but schematically too, right? Like you're going to, you know, you're going to start to see, um, you know, different things with Justin Fields with a, uh, quarterback that Matt Nagy trusts. Um, maybe you'll see more different deep routes because Nagy trusts the quarterback to go deep. I mean, these there's just endless possibilities, but the best in the bit when I tell y'all, man, Kellen is out here dropping the knowledge. Uh, it's it's absolutely you know, I learn a lot from this stuff, man. I know all the people who view this are like, damn, man, how does this guy know so much? I'm thinking the same thing, man. I mean, this guy is a football encyclopedia here. Um, so we're, we're glad to have him, man. We'll do, I think, Justin Fields next week. Looking around uh, midweek again for release for yep. that. Um, and then throughout the season, we're going to keep breaking it down. So um, anything else you want to add, my man? No, man, you, you're complimenting me, but you're the one driving the next-gen stats and, and all this. All now. I do is look <laughs> stuff up on Google. <laughs> <laughs> man, you got it. But no, I mean – we have so much fun doing these. Yeah. I mean, me and you are, are two of the biggest Bears fans on the face of the planet. And, and we love the game of football. We love the X's and O's. Obviously, we're in proximity to each other based on Ohio State. We're excited about Justin Fields. We're excited about Darnell Mooney. We're excited about the Bears and their future now, especially that we've got a quarterback. But, you know, I, I hope that people that are watching this are enjoying these film breakdowns as much as we are because it's not like we're stopping anytime soon. Mm-hmm. So we're going to keep going with them. But, um, yeah, go check out, like I said last time before we end it, go check out Bears Nation podcast. Guys, just had a Josh Woods episode dropped, right, I believe? Yep, Josh Woods came on, had yep. a lot of fun with that. Yeah, had a lot. you guys had a lot of fun with that. Um, go check it out, man. Kevin drops some podcasts on Bears, or Bears Nation podcasts. You know, he's got episodes dropping all the time. And then, um, man, we'll keep these these videos going. I had a great time doing it again. Yeah, we'll keep them rocking. I'm thinking we got to do a recreation play where you're Justin Fields and I'm Darnell Mooney, and uh, we break. Dude, I'm with it. I'm I'm with that. So uh, we'll think about that down the road. But yeah, appreciate you guys for tuning in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so you can stay on top of all the content coming up. Uh, You'll you'll, you'll see all that. So um, appreciate y'all. We'll see you next time. Bear Nation podcast break. Take care, y'all.